Futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good afternoon. Ira Epstein of Linden Associates with your financial market update for this Thursday, the 27th of April, 2017. And boy, it's going to be an interesting time when these markets reopen. Uh, we're not at that point yet, but come five o'clock, we should see the NASDAQ soar again because as the earnings kept rolling on, they just kept getting better and better. It didn't matter almost which company other than Starbucks, they made their numbers, but bunch of other companies, Alphabet and so on. The tech companies just going crazy and that's what this index is all about. Now the other indices, you know, will they be dragged along is going to be the bigger question on all that. I'm sure you've seen that it doesn't appear that we're headed for a, a shutdown of the government, which is also good news. And now the question is, what next? So let's go to the charts and let them give us an idea. On the E-mini S&P, the weekly chart, the market was up nicely. It's a 23.8610. Uh, the high so far is 23.9475. And, you know, you're, you're right at the, these numbers. This is a good number. You're knocking on the door of the highs. When we come to an area chart of just closes, 23.27 to 23.86. There's no such thing as a 23.86.10. They'll round that off. But that's where the market is uh, finished itself. And as you can see, that's a powerful number on the chart. As I broke the news, the question is, what about that gap? Do we get a breakaway gap to the upside or does the market come back and fill it? It won't stay that long. I'll stick my neck out because you don't see them on these charts that long. So that becomes one of the things I look at, and it's a fear. If you're a chart technician, uh, yes, you might catch one more surge, and God knows where it goes, or do you come back, and I'll come back to that chart, and fill that, and you find yourself buying here, and the market might want to fill it. So people that are chartists like I am, gaps are good and they're bad. They're a magnet in one way, and... It could lead to another gap, which is, a, is it's like a fireworks on July 4th. Bang, you're taking off to the upside again. So who knows? Looking at the chart action, you've got a pattern of higher lows, higher highs, bullish. The market's over the 18-day average, which is over the 100-day average, bullish. The market is now fighting the upper Bollinger Band. You had two days up and over it, and today you come back and you settled underneath it. So... You're not in an over extreme, and I think that's extremely important. You are overbought as can be. It is a Friday. Will we see any profit taking? I can't answer that for you. What I can answer is the, all, everything on this chart is bullish, except it's a bit overbought. In the Dow, it's the same story, a bit overbought. The pullback was just enough to get back under the upper Bollinger Band, so you're not excessive anymore. You're just pushing that band up. Everything's bullish in the market. You've expanded the upside of the market and the downside as you're doing that. So good action there. NASDAQ, poster child for a market and a runaway, and it just keeps moving itself higher on this. And with the close, now we know today's close at 5591 is over the upper Bollinger Band. Yesterday's close at 55.36 was over 55.32. That's two days in a row over it. The day before you were over the upper Bollinger Band, that's three days. And the day before that you were over it, that's the fourth. Five is typically about what you get. I've seen seven. I've mentioned that over and over. But you're getting to that point where tomorrow could be another strong day. But do you stay over the band? In the Russell, it's similar type action. Will we follow through is going to be it. So the two markets, and I think I've been very consistent for you here, that have been absolutely bullish are the NASDAQ, the Russell. The laggards have been the S&P and the Dow. That's what you've got. That doesn't mean any of them are bad. It's where they're at. All are overbought. None have embedded readings. When we go to the VIX, the VIX has a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. Now, today the VIX had an outside day down. It took out yesterday's high and low, 
finished the day lower, actually on the low of the day. So today's high is going to be one of those numbers. If you see it suddenly taken out, it's a warning sign that they've got a, a short trap here. Do I expect it? No, there's no reason to expect it unless it happens. But if it does, you should have it in your armory of things you watch. Now if the market starts getting down, what if it gets under that 10 level and stays there? Well, I can tell you right now, Barron's, the Wall Street Journal, everything you read, Fox, Bloomberg, they'll all have information on it and everybody will be talking about it. Let's see if that occurs. In the June 30-year bonds, you've got a pattern of lower highs, lower lows, a bearish configuration, resistance 152.3, if the market starts getting under today's lows again, you could get another wave of selling. Maybe you get down to that 150 level eventually. But the market's in a bearish configuration. Now I'm adding to this chart today the ETF TLT, which is basically uh, notes or bonds that are 20 years in duration and longer. And what we have here is the same formation. Lower highs, lower lows, resistance right here, momentum pointing down. Same party. 10-year notes. The market's got the swing line down, but prices came back and settled over the 18-day average of closes. Like the bonds, I would think that if you get under today's lows, you're going to attract some selling in this market, and it could get very interesting from that point. The June dollar index has moved to the right-hand side of the lower Bollinger Band, but it's now starting to get a couple of days in a row where you have a reading underneath 20. Could this be where the market finally embeds and starts working itself lower? It's a possibility. Because what the euro currency did is while it was down, Mr. Draghi today, the European president, uh, ECB president, not of Europe, but the European Central Bank, made it very clear the bank is not changing its policy. The bank is looking at the conditions. It's not satisfied. It thinks it needs easy money. He has zero intent at this point, uh, to the chagrin of many, many of the other uh, central bankers in Europe, of wanting to change the policy and curtail in any manner the 60 billion euro a month of bonds that he continues to buy. They, they, he calls them assets, but that's basically what they are. And I, I understand his part. Number one, why do anything in front of the French election coming up on May 7th? Then we have more elections taking place in Europe, but he's probably also looking over his shoulder at energy prices, which aren't able to stay up. They certainly aren't going where people thought they were. We just had a six, seven dollar a barrel break, and Europe looks at that. Now, today his comment was, no, inflation's not what they're worried about. Did you read the statement? because the bank doesn't think they're going to get anywhere near that 2% inflation rate right now. If you look at the pound, the pound is saying, we are so much better off without you, Europe, in terms of what the currency is doing. Now, we're going to have elections that come up very soon there in June, and that's when Parliament's going to get voted on, and we'll see if the Liberal Democrats can get a, a say on that in one manner or the other. But at this point, this market is just nah, and if it embeds, could be going into the 130s, just the opposite of every pro thought on this currency. In the Japanese yen, the market keeps taking out premium. The Korean situation seems to be a war of words more than anything else. And tell me what else is there for people to run to this for? Get a good stock market break going, yeah. But you don't have fear in this market right now, so they're not buying that. Also, the Bank of Japan, if you read what it did, it's not moving at all on its monetary policy. Crude oil, this is just what I was telling you. Now today it finally got down to the lower Bollinger Band again, got through it by about seven ticks and then came back and settled off of it 70 higher. But you've got a clean cut downtrend. There's absolutely nothing friendly on this chart. Admittedly, we had gotten here before and went all the way up to 54 and are traveling the road back down to those lows. In the gasoline, this has been, if you will, the anchor pulling the market down. Instead of prices going up into the spring, they're doing what they did a year ago or so. They just keep coming down, and when they come down, it hurts the refineries because they say, why am I bidding on a, a, a barrel of uh, oil to refine when I can't make money on the byproducts? That becomes a big issue. Natural gas can go either way here. This is that funny time of the year when you're often uh, not hot enough to draw a lot of demand for it. 
Cold weather is here. I just saw it today. It was actually snowing in uh, Madison, 25 degrees in Oklahoma. So wouldn't be surprised if we get a bid. And while the June's here, the July chart's acting a little stronger than this one as you go further out for the summertime. So interesting plays, but all you need to do is get over 335.55 on this pattern, and that throws out a buy signal looking for the market. Could it go even higher than that? So that's where things come in. As you can see, they're clearing the boards behind me now, getting ready for trading that's 15 minutes from now. I want to remind you all of something that you probably haven't tried and you should. You know, one of the things that a lot of people that follow me look for are items that people read, where do they get ideas, what's going on. Consensus, I want you to understand what they are. All these different contributors write and send newsletters of some type to them. They take them, they break them down by sections. Let's talk gold. They create from that a bullish sentiment index. So most of the letters bullish or bearish. Gives you a pretty good idea. What they do is it's a four-week trial. You let us know. We notify them with all your information. They're going to send you a user ID and password. You're going to type it in on their website. You can read all of these reports. And the beauty is how they're all done. And then every Tuesday you get consensus, which is another way to look at bullish sentiment of the people writing for all these different brokerage and analyst firms. Pretty cool way. 866-973-2077. That's what you call. You can go to our website at www.irapstein.com. You can get it that way. Underneath us on websites, you'll see it says click here for free Iris free offers. Click that area. It'll come to us. Or if you're watching me on YouTube, just click up here. There's an icon. From there, away you go. The forms will appear. Just fill out the info and choose anything else you want. I'm Ira. You have a great day, and I'll see you all tomorrow.